And we begin tonight with our new reality as a country and in the media as our first ever criminal trial of a former U.S. president is slated to get underway bright and early Monday morning in the state of New York versus Donald Trump. The jury of 12 plus six alternates was sworn in this afternoon much more quickly than almost anyone expected. But the reality that we're now faced with is that my industry, the media, which has struggled with how to cover a former president who fomented an actual insurrection and is running for president again, now has to figure out how to cover the absolute spectacle of him being on trial. The historic undertaking is understandably attracting a global media presence, which, of course, is what Trump wants and thrives on. Expect him to use the media packed outside the courtroom to do his Trump show every day of the trial. But the crush of media gathered in Manhattan is far outpacing the population of what Donald Trump also wanted to see. He had called for a massive outpouring of his supporters to rise up while he stuck in the courtroom. But the designated protest area across the street that he wanted to be filled with his fans has been anything but. Only a few dozen people showed up earlier in the week, vastly outnumbered by the crush of reporters. But the designated protest area is a space for anyone who wants to make a point, whatever that point may be, with a massive throng of cameras and reporters from around the world just across the street. That is what happened today, minutes after the full jury was impaneled inside the courthouse. Now, I should warn you, the following image is graphic. It shows a man who set himself on fire in that designated protest area. The man was taken to a hospital. He is alive and in critical condition. Police have identified him as Maxwell Azzarello of St. Augustine, Florida. He had arrived in New York sometime earlier in the week. Three law enforcement officers told NBC News that he may have posted his intention to set himself on fire in advance on his substack. And while the investigation is ongoing, it definitely raises concerns, not just about the security and safety of those involved with the trial itself. It raises that other point that I mentioned about what the spectacle of the Trump trial of the 21st century might attract over the next several weeks and the question of why a young man would self-immolate in the park. We do not believe he is, uh, this was targeting any particular person or any particular group. We just, right now, label it as a sort of a conspiracy theorist. Joining me now is NBC News correspondent Yasmin Vesuvian, who witnessed the self-immolation in the park in front of that courtroom, in front of that courthouse. Jim Cavanaugh, retired ATF special agent in charge and MSNBC contributor. And Michael Beschloss, NBC News presidential historian and friend of the show. Um, Yasmin Vesuvian, I do want to start with you. Tell us about that moment you were there and witnessed it live. It, it was it was an unbelievable joy moment to see, I, I got to say. I was on the air live um, with Chris Jansing earlier on in the day. There was history in the making, right? This was the first jury ever seated for this historic trial in which we will all be watching very closely over the next six weeks. And then I heard a scream out of my right ear in which someone said he is setting himself on fire. And I turned to my right just off camera and about 50 feet in front of me, Joy, really half a block, half a New York City block, I see a large plume of fire, about 20 to 25 feet high. And I gotta say, in my head, I thought for a moment, okay, that is an area that has cordoned off for protesters. I've seen protesters there back in April when the former president was first arraigned. There were protesters there on Monday as well. That number has um, gone down every single day since then. And so I thought someone set off a fire. And, and then I looked more closely as I was speaking live with Chris, and I saw the outline of an individual's body. And I thought to myself, that is a human being. They have set, set themselves on fire, Joy. And, and his hands were raised in the air as he was standing there, arms wide open. And he burned for two minutes. It seemed like a lifetime, but it was two to three minutes. And then collapsing to the ground as security personnel, members of the FDNY, members of NYPD showed up and were able to put out that fire. And, and I got to say, um, Joy, what I saw with my own eyes and what his body had gone through at that moment is unexplainable. And his body then shook and EMT showed up. 
they put him on a stretcher and they, and they carried him out. When he lit himself on fire, Joy, I was told by another person, another witness um, that saw this all go down, that he initially had knelt down, and we learned this from officers as well during the press conference, he had reached into his backpack and he had thrown up into the air a ton of papers. Then he had doused himself in fluid, in lighter fluid of some sort. He had used a lighter then to light himself on fire. On those papers were wide-ranging conspiracy theories. Honestly, none of it made sense. It was all nonsensical. It was political. Some of it was about the mob. Some of it was about various universities here in New York, as well as throughout the country. They were wide-ranging conspiracy theories. Whether or not that is what motivated this individual to do that, we don't know. But it was a shocking moment, juxtaposing that to what we were also reporting on at that very moment, which was impaneling a jury to sit and decide the fate of the ex-president of the United States. It was, it was, it was an incredible moment um, to see as a journalist and, and as, a, as a citizen here in New York. It's something that you imagine seeing in a war zone. Mm -hmm. um, I've reported in war zones before, but you would never imagine seeing in downtown Manhattan, in my hometown, when they're to report on the former president of the United States. Yeah, I mean, and Jim Cavanaugh, I mean, the, just to listen to Yasmin explain that, it is, it's harrowing because even that type of protest is not a protest that is typical in the United States. I mean, we did see it um, with the young man who protested. There was a free Palestine uh, pr protester. He was a military veteran, lit himself on fire. That was a rare kind of Western version of this. These are protests that, you know, during the Vietnam War, we would see Tibetan monks do. You know, this was that kind of a protest. So it's very unusual in Western society for someone to do that. Um, and it also doesn't appear to be related to this trial. But this trial is going to attract just intense media attention. It's going to attract media, which means it's going to attract whoever wants to use that media for whatever purposes they have, including tragedy. Well, exactly. Ones. Exactly, Joy. Well, first, let me say, you know, what, what great reporting here. I mean, you're, you're at the spot of a, a big event, a trial of a former president, and you, you witness... Uh, you know, a, a horrible suicide, a violent death. That's what this is. Is That's what uh, he has been witnessed and described for us. And this is why we have a free press. And I think Michael can elaborate on that for us deeply. But this is why we have a free society, because we can have correspondents that can report actually what is actually going on, because we can't all be there. Um, but look, this person traveled from Florida and I've worked these cases where people strap bombs on themselves, they blow themselves up, they kill themselves, fire, explosives, you know, firearms. Uh, we, we were always involved in that with ATF, and I think you saw ATF agents on the scene there because they're the government's bomb and arson experts. So, yes, people do this to themselves. But the point here is the person traveled from Florida, Joy, all the way to the Trump trial. This is not connected to Trump. It, it has really nothing to do with him. I read all his writings that he posted. It's nonsensical, as Yasmin clearly reported. It doesn't make any sense. He names everybody, every politician, every Hollywood person, every billionaire, every person on the news, every little name he can think of. He ties them all together in some crackpot conspiracy theory. He is, he's a disturbed person. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I think the, the good part of that, though, is, you know, hopefully the judge We'll take a look at that and to, to reassure his jurors that this was not directed at the trial, at Mr. Trump, at them, at the court family. I mean, I hope he takes the time to do that. I, I would even say, you know, to the judges, you know, consider letting the jurors read his rantings, which are only just a couple of pages. But I think once you read it, you will be more relaxed that this was not anything directed at you. Yeah. And just to close... Um, uh, the Secret Service uh, protection of Mr. Trump. I've been on many of these details. Let me tell you, they were not at all worried about his security. Uh, mm -hmm. He's in that large courthouse building. This is outside in a fenced-in area with lots of NYPD and New York County uh, courts police. Uh, they're not worried about that. They would have had protective intelligence, special agents outside. They would witness that. They were getting it on their, on their earplugs right away. They know exactly what's going on. They know exactly the danger. The danger here is not to Mr. Trump. The danger here is to the court family, the mm -hmm. jurors, for other mentally disturbed individuals, emotional people that can come right. to this location, which is the center now. It, right. it kind of becomes a place like the White House or the Capitol, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, where emotionally disturbed people are drawn to it like a magnet. Yeah. And so that's the danger going forward. Mm. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.